Hello everyone. Previously, uh, we were looking into the SPY stocks prediction and go over uh, the EDA sections in the model building forecasting and also talking about using FPP2 package to forecast the stock surprise. Uh, after that, we did some cross validation on different models. Here, uh, we're going to introduce uh, a rolling uh, factor or rolling windows set up in a cross validation um, process. And then let's uh, uh, go through the uh, go from the beginning fairly quickly and uh, set up the uh, data and a model for the uh, cross validation. So let's load the data uh, from December 1st last year. So there are roughly um, four months of data. Let's plot the data. As we can see here, that's an overall trend since December 1st, 2020. Uh, the EDA section uh, should show um, very similar uh, patterns in the uh, partial ACF. Let to detrend a little bit. As we can see, we're not going to plot this section anymore. Let's quickly go through the uh, model section. Let's try the AR1. As we can see, um, the p value is just still not significant. The uh, residues are fine. This model is um, a fairly uh, fine. Let's plot it. So it's a, something like a, a little bit shifting to the right. Uh, we're not going to go uh, this. Let's quickly um, do a little bit of uh, forecasting. This is still a downturn, as we can see, actually, from the last time of prediction, it's a fairly, fairly accurate, um, relatively um, uh, making common sense using the AR1 model. It's a downturn, as we um, observed from last video and then last week. Uh, if we're introducing the detraining, as we can see, uh, it is still a little bit up, uh, upward uh, training. Let's fairly uh, quickly go through this section. That's kind of a plotting the different models of the flat line always means uh, not very helpful downtown as we um, observed before this is just uh, done in GG plot 2 um, we're not going to do this the residues um, will be fairly similar the, for the cross um, validation section there's some uh, sections you can introduce the rolling window that means I will use uh, last 20 days or four weeks uh, stocks data to predict the next five days uh, stock surprise and when I go forward five days and then I kind of uh, have to move this window forward following these five days then I can uh, leave behind uh, the data uh, kind of a, a five days you only keep uh, this 20 um, days data within your model or using 
uh, using the model to predict the next five days. You're not going to use the, the whole data from the beginning and then you kind of inch uh, forward to get five days uh, prediction. That's the difference. Uh, sometimes for uh, RIMA data, and it's uh, one single uh, variable, it's uh, not very helpful uh, when you use uh, uh, a large amount of the data. And for the big uh, data or the large uh, size of the data, um, and to have a, a window of fresh memory, maybe it's more reasonable uh, to have a updated uh, prediction all the time. As we see, but I'm not if, uh, well, as we see, it's it's even higher than a naive model. So, uh, in this uh, a little bit uh, difference, else if there's some um, small window, okay, uh, window too small. Expand the date. Oh, we have uh, the data not very. Um, how to say this? Uh, um, not very, not very um, consistent. Let's expand the the window from 20 to 30 days. We have a 70, uh, 37 MSE here. Not if we have a 38. This is have a 39. So sometimes you you have to choose between these models. And um, let's take a quick look again. It may varies. And uh, next time we're going to switch to QQQ to see uh, how it behaves. Uh, when we use this uh, AR1 model and other models uh, possible. Thank you uh, for watching. Uh, this is an uh, exploratory uh, place. Use it with a caution. This is uh, not for investment advice by all means.